everybody. Welcome back to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Before we get started today, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and find that subscribe button down on your lower right side. Make sure you click the bell and also click all notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos. It is Wednesday. It is working on the farm Wednesday and today you get to meet my flock. It's chicken coop cleaning time. Before I head out to our flock, I did want to go ahead and tell you guys, I'm actually located in central Oklahoma, so me outside with short sleeves on is nothing abnormal in the middle of winter. Our winter has been ungodly mild. Almanac said it was supposed to be crazy hard. It has been crazy mild. It's about 68 degrees out right now. It is so warm and beautiful. Tonight's supposed to be a high of like... 30 and then on Tuesday and Wednesday we're supposed to get snow so it's a constant flux of weather changes which makes having chickens outside uh, very I don't want to say difficult you just have to be aware of what's coming with the weather so you do have to kind of be a little bit of a weather person you got to watch it and make sure it doesn't get too cold for them also we have a heat lamp inside of the brooding box which is next to our chicken coop um, I do turn that on at night for the baby guineas, but that heat does resonate into the chicken coop itself. So it helps to keep the girls warm when it goes down in the teens at night, or if we have things like snow. Okay, so I'm in our chicken coop area and we have a, an awesome yard, like electric fence, but the cool thing with our electric fence is it's not on. <laughs> so I can actually go up and touch it and mess with it. But if you notice, our electric fence, is just a white electrified fence. Um, it is about three feet high and it goes totally around, all the way around to the shop, all the way around to the front of this chicken coop, which I'm gonna actually go inside and clean. But I wanted to come to you right now and kind of introduce you to my girls. So this beautiful girl is Juliet and this is Chica. We have had them since we started chickens in our little subdivision chicken coop. Um, we had three when we first started, now we have 13. I have four speckle girls that I don't even know what they are. I want to say, don't peck me. I want to say that they, I have Bantams and Marins, and then I have Well Summer. This is a Well Summer and Americana mix. Um, they lay green eggs, which are really pretty. Most of my chickens are really docile, and they let me pet them. Um, this is also one of our old girls. That is Cupcake. This is Chica. And then that's Juliet. Juliet, we had some issues with a couple, about a year ago she was attacked by something and I didn't know that she was gonna lay uh oh I have a chicken that's hobbling oh she's got a burr on her foot um, we call these the old girls right here they um, are just amazing they lay beautiful teal colored eggs so we've had a little bit of a problem with one of our dogs and he has been taking the butt feathers off of our chickens so I have three chickens that we raised from eggs this one here this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. We call them the nuggets. Um, they are like little chicken nuggets. There was six of them, three were roosters. They just happened to go to the back of the pasture and disappear. <laughs> the gray, beautiful girl right here. She doesn't like me very much, although I saved her life. She should be grateful. That is Stormy. Stormy is a um trying to think of when I got her. I think she is a bantam actually. And when I first got them and put them in the coop, they were still in a cage like a, a brooding cage. And I had a snake come in and tried to kill her. It was on her um neck and I shook the snake off and she actually lived. I can't believe she lived. This girl is still trying to attack me, y'all. Look at her beautiful tail feathers. She cute. She lays really pretty green colored eggs. And then we have, let's see, Goldie, which I would swear is a Rhode Island Red, but I bought her when I bought Marin's. Um, Goldie's the reddish color chicken rat there. She also was attacked by, I think, a dog and has no bum feathers at the moment. And then the black one over there is our loud talky girl. Her name is Flapper. She, she has the most beautiful, which I don't know that you can even see it on here. <laughs> 
she has like her feathers are like greenish like a peacock when she bends down um, and the sunlight hits her just right she is my escape artist along with stormy they like to hop the fence so one of the things we will be doing here shortly is clipping wings I love that they let me pet them like like little dogs <laughs> they just don't mind me petting them and touching them so welcome to our coop this coop is actually really kind of cool we found it in a tree when we moved here on this property a lot of the cedar trees like this one here were overgrown we decided to cut them like uh, trees instead of like big bushes and we found this kids playhouse in the trees just kind of all battered up it was a bright pink color it was not pretty at all so hubby and I painted it put a new roof on it because he's a he can actually do roofing um, we painted it this past fall we put in windows which I'll have to show you my cool little windows here um, they actually just flip up they have little latches on them so that I can actually lock them and then um, this way I can actually let it air out I love the windows absolutely love the windows Chica's hiding behind my bedding <laughs> when you first walk in our coop as you can see the pink and the white back there that pink is actually what color this house was when we first pulled it out of the tree <laughs> which is really funny it had big flowers on it too but it's still beautiful to it in all in itself but in our boxes it is an old shoe holder like one of the square eight by eights or nine by nine squares that you can buy like at walmart and prefab put it together uh, that's what this actually is and then we just put a front bar on the front of it to keep the bedding in there the chickens love it um we just attached it to one of the walls oh look treasures <laughs> so i guess i'll be um pulling those out in a little bit but we also have a brooding box, which right now is full of guineas. And this little hole, we've had to close it back up a couple times. Right now it's just kind of rigged closed, but um, my goal one day is to get a door on there too where I can flip it up and down. Um, but right now we have guineas in there and I'll show you those in a little bit. But right now I'm gonna clean this messy coop. So my chickens tend to think that this bag is also a place to lay. Every once in a while, I will find an egg in there. Um, I do keep all my extra bedding in here. I do get my bedding from Tractor Supply when it's on sale for like for $55 a, a bag. Um, I like the pine shavings better than the little teeny pieces. The chickens tend to make it more fluffy for themselves and they use it to keep warm in the winter time. So I do like the shavings better. I will clean out all my boxes. I will also clean all this mess off the floor. And there's someone peeking through. Come on in, girl. These girls have no names, poor polka dotted chickens. So when I clean our coop, I just use, I have very non-technical tools. This is actually just a broken broom. I was beating, I think, a spider or something, and I broke the handle off, and the thing is actually stuck inside. So I actually use this to dust my chicken coop. Now, I have on a mask because, yeah, it is chicken poop. So I keep this on so that I can make sure that I can clean without getting sick from the fumes, as my husband constantly reminds me, I need to make sure that I have this on. So I'm just gonna sweep things up and kind of show you what I do. Let me cover my mask here. I look like a bandit.
actually put down a little um, plastic tarp on the bottom so that we have it's uh, graded like um, it kind of looks like cardboard it's very wavy so the stuff doesn't actually stick to it so much so I just kind of brush it outside and then the chickens kind of go through it and do whatever they're gonna do um, so that helps to protect the flooring one of the things I think is really important is to let you know chicken poo is very um, acidic and it will eat through things so things like wood that's why we chose the cedar for the roosting bars because they are really really strong and that their poo is just so strong so you have to really protect the floor Okay, so as you see, I don't do this fabulous, clean, spick and span job. Um, all I do is kind of brush out all the bedding. I really do just push it right there by our door. As you can see, this is the chicken coop door. I just shove it out there and then they kind of come and do what they're gonna do with it. So um, the next thing I do go through with our nesting boxes, I actually just go in and kind of pull out a lot of the feathers because they tend to leave a lot of feathers in there and then I will put fresh bedding. So as you can see, there's little things like this little feather. I find a lot of these when I'm cleaning out the boxes. Um, I don't find a lot of other stuff in there other than eggs. Eggs are always good. But I do find a lot of feathers and I try to just go through, kind of pick out the big ones, throw them outside. And then what I'll do is I'll just go in and kind of fluff up the box, you know, get out all the, if there's any mice in there or stuff like that, I will just kind of check to make sure. And then I'll take some of the new bedding that I have here open and I'll just put it on top. And then this way they have a nice clean place to roost, but they also, as you see, have a beautiful spot to lay beautiful eggs. One of the very last things I do um, in my coop, I actually have this awesome bottle. I got this, I think from like Dollar General or the dollar store even. They were like a dollar and I got three when I bought these. And I actually filled it, it has some water, a little bit of witch hazel, peppermint, some wintergreen, and some spearmint. Um, I really, I honestly, I just spray all the window areas. I spray all the door areas. One, it makes it smell good, but also it helps to keep out the mice. Um, I have never, let me just say, knock on wood, I have never had an issue with mice in my chicken coop. And I really want to say it is because of the spray. So I just spray, as you see, I even spray in the boxes themselves. Um, Gives them something a little fresh. And then I just leave this bottle here up on this shelf. I do what I always like to talk about my awesome little decoration in here. This is a wreath that I actually made. And a lot of the chickens that were in this, I've lost a few, not, not a lot. I'd probably say like three maybe. Anytime the feathers fall out, I put them in here. Now guineas, I've lost some guineas. And that's a whole nother video blog because I have a story about my guineas. Here we are, a nice clean coop, and they're already trying to investigate. Look at them in the box. So the noise you hear is actually our baby guineas from our mama and daddy guinea that we still have from our original flock. I don't know about you guys, but I really do care for my chickens. They're not just a source of food for us. They really are like pets. I know almost every one of their names by heart. Um, 
There are a few that I can't tell apart, so I just call them the polka dotted girls. There are four of them. We had five. Our fifth one actually had what they call a prolapsed vent. Um, she could not lay because her vent actually would come out of her. So after probably about six months or so, she actually wound up dying and I'm not really sure why. Um, she just one day I looked at her, she didn't look good and that next morning she was gone. Uh, so. I love them so much that I cry when something happens, which is really kind of sad. So that is why they are pretty much protected in this little area here. My goal in the summer is to actually build an, enca an enclosed cage for them, um, the size of this particular yard that I'm in. So it's really hard to kind of show you, but it's probably about, I'd say about a third of an acre of land. And we plan to put up um, posts with sides like goat paneling and then uh, chicken wire all the way around so that they can be protected from predators. Uh, we do have predators here in this part of the country. We are in central Oklahoma. We have things like coyote, bobcat, owls, hawks. Um, there have been some uh, mountain lions not local but they are here in the state so I do want to protect them and keep them from getting hurt we have if you notice there's livestock behind me we do have we are surrounded by cows which is wonderful but kind of scary for our animals because that brings in predators so um, just to let you know I do care about my chickens I'm curious to know am I the only one who loves their chickens like they're their own they're my pets my babies I pick them up and love them and they're just amazing creatures so before I say goodbye today I just want to come say hi this is Chica she is my sweet sweet Americana I raised her from about the size of her head love my girl she is such a sweet, sweet baby. She has this beautiful, I don't know if you can see after this last molt that she did, she has one beautiful black feather um, in her wing. And as you see, they let me pick them up. They let me pet them, touch their faces, hold their nose. They let me hold their nose. Um, they're just amazing, amazing creatures. I absolutely adore them. So if you're interested in chicken stuff, one of the things I can suggest is to find the book called Strong's Backyard Chickens. Um, I'll try and link that below. That book has helped me tremendously. And of course on Pinterest, there is so much information out there that you can find and read. A lot of it's not all right, but you know, this is a learning experience for me. I grew up in New Jersey on the, where we had a little bit of grass, but we had a lot of concrete. So chickens were not normal for me. I didn't realize that the store-bought eggs that you get are much older than you think that they are and that they taste so different. Um, these girls have been so life-changing for me. Thanks y'all for visiting today on Work in the Farm Wednesday. I look forward to coming to speak to you on Friday for food fixing in the kitchen. If you would, please don't forget, please subscribe and make sure you turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. I do ask that you please give me a little thumbs up if you like the video, that helps me as well. I do also ask that you please hit the share button, share with all your friends and family if you think that this video would interest them. Talk to you guys later and I'll see you on Friday.